Here's the boys. We're a little bit late, but we're starting the day at two o'clock. Is that like a, probably like an hour late? Well, doesn't matter. We're at our favorite place where we used to come <laughs> over the last two years, Retro Gusto. Have you had breakfast yet? So we're gonna have lunch. I'm gonna go to the gym. And I'm gonna go to the beach. Get a nice little nice little glow before I leave. Little dinner, and we're gonna answer a Q&A, answer all your questions, and see how we can help you. Someone, t someone, when I, I basically put on Instagram what should me and George film today, and someone said you should both wear bandanas and spoon each other. <laughs> uh, is it sirloin steak? <laughs> Looks pretty good. Looks oh, fucking juicy, bro. Got a sirloin steak, and then in a couple of minutes we'll get the inside wall. Free gym snack. Free gym snack. Gonna be bloated as fuck. <laughs> Def or swole? Definitely swole. Yeah. It literally looks so fucking good. That's the right. thing is about this place, it's always consistent. Always consistent? Always consistent. And we like consistency. Consistency can be quite hard to find in everything. Mm. How about this? Power acai bowl, peanut butter, chocolate chunks, almonds, bananas, strawberries, pumpkin seeds for the zinc. Absolute filth. Zinc, pumpkin seeds make you rock solid. Yeah. Natural, Give natural Cialis. <laughs> <laughs> Cialis is a story. <laughs> the 40 mig. Okay guys, so once again, I am quickly disturbing the video. I'm very sorry. This video is a sick video. It's very long. It's very informative. Me and George had a really, really good bonding session. I'm so happy I got to see him before I went back to Bali. But big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Legend London. Here we have the classic t-shirt, one of my favorites. I wear a large. It is quite short. So if you have a longer torso, go for a large or an extra large. And we'll have these new nylon track pants, which are absolutely sick. They're not like cargo pants. They're more like kind of chino tracksuit bottoms. They're literally so sick, I love them. Lightweight, very comfortable, stretchy. Legend London, I love this way. Legend London have been killing it recently. So yeah, I wear a medium in the bottoms, I wear a large in the t-shirts, I'm gonna try on another quick fit for you um, in a pair of jeans. Three, two, one. Okay, so next outfit, white outfit, loose fit jeans. These are the baggiest jeans that Legend London do. Probably my favorite jeans, rip knee, surfer dude style. 32 regular in the jeans, large in the t-shirt and you can use the link in the description to shop all things Legend London. Use code Lou for discount. Your support is really appreciated. This is how I make a living. And so when you guys support me, use my codes, buy using my links, it really means the world to me. So, back to the video. I hope you enjoy it. It's a long one, but it's a very good one. <laughs> all right then, let's get to it. Here's our videographer for the day. Oh, Man, you work. <laughs> yes, I like your work on you, Luis. You're so free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hola. Hola. How are you? Hi. Bye. Can we have two day passes, please? Yes. Oh. Free workout. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just had two coffees. We're just going to share this. Use code Louis for discount. Do scoop point five. Scoop point five. Sure. There you go, just eat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. George is leading the workout today. Shoulders and triceps. Okay. What's the secret of the George and the training? Tell me the secret. Yeah, tell us what type of workouts you've been doing. What's your what's your split been? Whilst we have a little sip of this. My workout split has been legs, push, pull, full body. But I do um, phase twos four times a week. What's phase two? Um, so like a... 20 to 30 minute conditioning workout. Okay. Whether it's an AMRAP or an EMOM or rounds for time or we're working in pairs, basically using like the rower, ski erg, assault bike, um, kettlebells, um, skipping. How many times a week do you do that? I do that four times a week. Nice. And I've been doing, I was doing Mai Tai three times a week as well. Sick. So I was doing a lot of training. But I've not been doing Mai Tai for like two weeks now. But I miss it. Straight back to Bali. Back on the Mai Tai guys. George's routine. George loves <clears throat> Bali because his routine is very, very good there. Very oh yeah. Wake up at 6 a.m., work out, breakfast, 
work, work out more, eat well, sleep well. How many eat cookie in the day? You're no, he doesn't cook anymore. I don't get the well. But do you like it good? I do, I do like cooking, but I've, I've been slacking on the cooking because it's so cheap in Bali. In Bali, you just get everything. Wow, he is healthy that yeah. you eat. So, so he yeah. doesn't need to cook. I get my breakfast delivered. Do you? Oh, yeah. Nice. From, from like the restaurant, which is like. And it's so cheap. Away. My plan after a beef probably gonna leave in September. Maybe end of September. Gonna go with Cindy to Madrid for a couple of months, maybe a month or two. And then we're going to Bali. We'll have to. It's on my list. It's top of my list. You gotta check it out. Yeah. 12. Come on. 13. 14. 15. Yeah. Oh. Three sets. Good topic what we're doing. Super set. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> so, shoulders and tricep. An absolute filthy pump. We're going for four supersets, three sets on each um, superset. So yeah, the first one is gonna be barbell press above your head, straight into upright rows. 15 reps on each. High reps for this workout, it's not about kind of focusing on getting stronger. This is just about getting a, a juicy beach pump for the ladies. Not for Louis, go. but for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the motivation for you work the train the training? I have to. I have to do it. It's it's an obligation. It's for others. I'm not here for myself. I'm here to inspire the masses. So That's I have answer. to Yeah. Do you understand? I have to live and breathe it. Okay. No, it's come on sometimes the boys, ah, because I want a more girl. No. No. <laughs> That's when you're 17 <laughs> or 16. Now was after that. It's all about you know, just seeing how far you can push yourself, inspiring others. Yeah. That's what Jews. I have got to pay my Jews every day. How can I tell people? Tell through you model the Calvin Klein. <laughs> Calvin Klein. <laughs> this Lululemon is true. today. Okay. Lululemon. <laughs> Cover it up. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Easy. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Three more. Fourteen. Last one. Tell me you. You ask. My motivation. Yeah. So I look beautiful for you. <laughs> You're beautiful before than me. Now more beautiful. Well, so what's your motivation? My motivation is my friends, people like George and Mike. <laughs> I have to. No. I have to. Plus it just feels nice. We're gonna go and enjoy ourselves at the beach and eat some nice food. So it's nice to punishment before enjoy. I think people reward themselves, don't they? Yeah, and if you go to the beach and eat loads of food and have a beer or whatever, but you haven't done a workout yet, you don't really deserve it. So it's better to work out Go for a little bit of pain, a little bit, for, a little struggle, and then go and enjoy. So, well, when you've earned it, you feel better. Exactly. But are you more enjoying? <coughs> I know that. No, it's too much street, so it's good. Come on. Go, 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 go. Tiger. Go, go, go. Eleven. Tiger. Twelve. Come on. No, it's Tiger. Ah. Come on. Yes, one more. Feel what? Testosterone. Testosterone? Yeah. Yeah, well, if you work out, you build more natural testosterone. Stimulate the growth. Exactly. If you're lazy and you sit on your ass all day, you have low testosterone. It's not doing anything to activate your body. Whereas if you're lifting heavy weights, building more muscle, you have naturally more testosterone. So you feel better, you have more energy, you feel more masculine. Testosterone makes you strong, dopamine makes you feel good. But you get both from doing a workout. I think at the end of the day, we should want to look masculine and manly. If you've got man boobs and you're fat, out of shape, overweight, then what are you kind of offering to society? And what, what are you kind of offering others as well? Do you know what I mean? Like, aren't we all men look lean and athletic? I think now we're all couch potatoes. I think even if you are that 
small percentage now who train hard, eat well, look after themselves, you stand out massively. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's not exactly that hard, is it? <laughs> to train a few times a week and to eat responsibly well. Like this guy, he's not like he's got the best diet in the world and he still looks better than 99.9% .9 of people, doesn't he? It's like Fucking hell, it can't be that hard. This guy drinks beer, beer ne nearly every day. Every day. <laughs> what the fuck? Every it's day. It's like, come on. How can you achieve that physique drinking beer every day? It just goes to show, doesn't it? People, they must be just so fucking lazy. And exactly, so if you're watching this, get the fuck up off your ass. Like, get some work done. Being on, honest. Fuck up. Like, Go to the gym. That's it, literally. Exactly. Being honest, like, if you saw what Louis's diet was like daily, you should think, fuck. It's not actually that hard to look decent. Like, come on, guys, what the fuck are you doing? We've already burnt 150 calories. Yep. All right, we're moving wow. on, mate. We've got um, side raises. Yeah. And some skull crushers. Okay. So we'll do. We'll use the, I'll use that for skull crushers. <laughs> Next question is, what happens when someone kind of falls out of their routine? They've maybe skipped the gym for, maybe they've been out for a month and they're kind of struggling to get back in. They're feeling bad, but they don't really know how to, how, to, how do you fix your routine? Do you currently in a, in a bad way? If you've got bad habits, because sometimes it happens to me. I'll not go to the gym, I'll not run for a week or two weeks and I'm out of my routine and then I just kind of forget about it and don't care. But I feel very guilty myself. So what would you suggest people to do? To well, I think, you sh I think you should feel relatively guilty because you know you're not basically living up to your own expectations of yourself. You're living up to your true potential, isn't it? You're holding yourself back and like, there's a point where you can be so hard on yourself where you get, you get paralyzed and you end up not doing anything. Yeah. You need to use that, that feeling of kind of like slacking off and not doing your best for motivation and driving you forward but people need to realize that i struggle with it everyone fucking struggles with it but i think what people who are beginners do is when they when they end up going off track they don't get back on yeah for months and i think what people who are consistent do they get back on straight away they might have a week off even two weeks off max but then they get back on because they know that if they have too long off all those gains, all those results, all the hard work will just go. And I think as well, another thing which I always tell Cindy, Cindy's just starting to get into the gym, is it's better for Cindy to at least just turn up to the gym, even if it's for 20 or 30 minutes, and do something so that she just falls into the habit of turning up to the gym. Yeah. Same as like someone turning up to work. They turn up to the office because they have to every single day. So if Cindy or someone who isn't used to going to the gym goes every single day, five times a week, even if they go for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, it's better than doing nothing. Yeah. I think. Yeah, you're always gonna feel better after a workout. Yeah. That's so true. So, and another thing that I read yesterday is if you've got a super busy life, you work a lot, you've got a wife, you've got kids, you've got many distractions in your life, go to the gym first thing in the morning so that you can't use the excuse of being tired, you can't use the excuse of I didn't have time. You get it done first thing before you start your day and then there's no excuse. Yeah. You like to work out in the morning. I think it's, you just get it boxed off, don't you? And then you don't have to think about it because if you if you leave it till later on at night, if you've got a busy lifestyle, you've got kids, then you end up not having the time. Exactly. But if you get it boxed off in the morning, you have a massive spike in dopamine. You've just full on woke yourself up. You're energized. You've ticked that box. And then whatever happens for the rest of the day doesn't matter because you've done your workout. <laughs> question 
is for people, especially beginners, how do they know how to progress? How do they know when to start using a heavier weight? So, George? Well, let's say you've got 10 kilo dumbbells, okay? You've got 10 reps. So, you want to make sure that you're getting good form. And, and controlling good, the weight. And good technique. If you're struggling, you're going to do that. And you're going to use your whole body, so you're taking the tension away from that specific muscle. So if you're using your whole body and you're not controlling it, then you need to put down the weight. Because the most important thing in the beginning is to control the weight. Yeah, when you get to 10 reps with perfect form, then you can start to go up the increase next Increase the weight, maybe like, yeah, 1.5 or two kilos. Up, 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 up. But once you can control the weight and you've, you can do it slowly with control, you can feel it in the muscles, then that's when you can eventually, if you've done 10 or 12 reps, you can start increasing the weight. Okay, next up guys, another superset. This yeah. is the third superset. Third superset. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do close grip press ups. I want you to max out as many reps as possible. Okay, close grip press ups straight into front shoulder raises. Okay, for 15 reps. Super set, what have we got? Right, we got dips with tricep push downs, repping out, same again, maxing out on dips, and then we're going to tricep push downs, 15 reps, three Perfect. sets. Come on, come on, keep going. Oh shit, come on. Nice. Cindy's the one, Cindy's the screenwriter, as yeah. she says, for today's workout. So she says, the next question, what, does, what do you think of people who think that PTing or online, online coaching is just for people to make maybe some easy money? They're not actually that driven themselves. Maybe they're not in shape themselves. Maybe they're actually not even that knowledgeable themselves. And they don't take the job seriously. What do you think of people like that? I know you feel very strongly about this. George, my answer is that George thinks that you should practice what you preach. So, if you want to go into more detail. Because George hates PTs who don't practice what they preach. It's difficult because sometimes I'll slack off and sometimes I won't be on top of my game 
and I'll feel like absolute shit and I'll feel like a fraud. This happens, but for those guys out there who are getting into the fitness industry because they're just after a quick buck and trying to make a lot of money when truly they don't actually care or passionate about helping people transform and change lives, they're not gonna last and it's gonna, it's gonna be seen when people work with you, the compassion, the empathy that you have together when you work client to coach, the relationship, the cracks will show and the results will show as well. And you may get a lot of clients on board, but your churn rate, your client retention will be absolutely shit and you won't have a successful business model. How I employ my coaches is based on the character. Yes, they need to know their shit, but they have to be truly passionate about helping people transform. That's the biggest number one factor because when shit hits the fan and it gets tough because we work with mainly lifestyle clients and they're the hardest people to work with. We're not prep coaching, which to be honest is pretty easy to get someone in shape if it's a bodybuilder or an athlete. They will literally eat chicken and broccoli every single meal. The lifestyle clients, we like a pizza, we like a beer here and there. So it's a, li a little bit difficult. A lot of these people are massively overweight, out of shape, depressed, down, low. They've been through some shit. And how to get them out of that, they need to relate with you. They need to know that you actually give a fuck and you're not just trying to take the money. And that's why a successful company like mine will outsurpass any of these businesses who don't actually give a shit about people. And that's why George has a, an onboarding process for people who want to work with him, even for his clients, he doesn't just take on any client. No. If a client isn't pulling that weight, George will tell them. Oh, Sorry, yeah. I'm not going to waste any more time on you. I don't, I don't, I don't want my coaches to waste time on the clients, but I don't want the clients to waste time themselves and to waste their money. It's pointless. I don't want to take someone's money if they're not dedicated to it, or they're wasting my coach's time. I would rather them go away, come back when they're actually Ready willing to, to put the work in because it's fucking hard. It's very fucking hard. And it's a daily practice of working on yourself, your nutrition, your habits, trying, trying to eliminate junk food, stay away from alcohol and drugs. You're not just changing your physique, you're changing your whole lifestyle, you're changing your mentality, you're changing everything. When the morning responsibility and the hard work is strong, the quash or the client, 50 fitting or the quash good, but more responsibility needs the client more. Well, you can have the best coach in the world and if the client doesn't listen or pay attention or commit to it, then it's a waste of time for both. It's sample. It's 50 when 50. I'm, go I'm going to the cirurgy, the doctor is the best, but next the cirurgy, me eat, no, be careful, so. The surgery is a waste. You have to be willing to put the fucking work in. It's as simple as that. Just like in business, you're not gonna be successful if you're not willing to fucking suffer and grind it out and develop those skills, those habits and get better daily. You will go backwards a lot of the time, but are you actually gonna get back up and keep on moving forward and learn from those slip ups, those mistakes and see them as opportunities to grow? Come on, go, 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 go. Yes, at least one, two, Three, four, five. Six. I think that's it now. Good job. Yeah, it's sweaty. Wow. Well, oh, that is 53 minutes, 667 calories. My heart rate was up around 150. It's quite high for me, so very good. It's a fucking zone two run. Very good workout in Next the heat. More. Every more. Day similar because you're not feeling understand it's it helps when you're working out with george because the intensity is so much more intense right right what we do we go to the beach yeah we're going to the beach <laughs> vamos go just moved out here two weeks ago to then september really i'm just doing my like online coaching and that as well but, um, as, have you met george uh yeah i've seen george's content as well nice to meet you mate you all right yeah i thought i'd say hi i saw you guys kicking about but i didn't want to interrupt your video or that Wait, oh, say, good, Roy, say hello to the vlog. <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> right, so just tell us what you just told me. Uh, Roy just moved out here. Yeah, two weeks ago, and probably a big inspiration was watching Louis' content, you know, like living the lifestyle, going to 
Nirvana Beach, going to the clubs and all that as well. So here to the end of September and it's probably Sick, bro. quite love, a for this guy. Love that, yeah. love that. <laughs> Online coach, similar to George. Yeah, love that, bro. Anyways, good to meet you. What's your Instagram? I'll uh, put, it, put it in the video. Roy PT on nice. Instagram. So, nice to meet you, bro. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, nice to meet you. Guys. See you. See you in Bye, bro. Second steak of the day. <laughs> I think we can do three steaks in one day. Do you reckon? Yeah. Get a steak tonight as well? <laughs> that looks good, that man. Really, really good. Lack of lack of sides though. I think you're still gonna be hungry. I I got extra veg. Oh, did you? Because the potatoes are like deep fried, man. And I'm trying to keep it lean today. Why are you trying to keep it lean, by the way? Well, I lost I lost some decent amount of weight when I got here, but then for like three days straight, I just went wild, bro. What is your weight for people People are curious? My weight was 97 before I came by Ibiza and then it went down to 94 and it's back up to 96. So that two, three kilos makes quite a big difference when you're pretty lean. For those wondering, by the way, we are at Tropicana, which could be one of my favorite beach clubs because they don't rip you off. Everything is expensive but more affordable than anywhere else. For example, the sunbeds are 20 euros which is reasonable because anywhere else they're 100 euros or 50 euros or 60 euros. The food's affordable. I think that steak was 20, 21? Oh no, 31. Oh, was it? <laughs> 31. I was going to get the big T-bone, which I got the other day. That's 37. Is it? It's big. It's juicy. It's good, but... We're in a beef Not as good as Retro Busto. Is it not? We're going to eat paella. <laughs> That's what. All I've eaten today is an acai bowl. Is that literally all you've eaten? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, for um, 1,100 calories. But you've consumed alcohol, which is true. How many calories do you think you've had? Many. How many beers have you <laughs> what a hard car in it, many beers. Do you like paella? I love paella, me mate. <laughs> right, what's everyone's opinion on the paella? George is loving it. Pretty good, mate. It's good, Cindy? One of the best, yeah. The best. It's really, really good. Sano. You know if it's got this kind of dark colour, it's going to be tasty. Got lots of meat. Loads of fish. Mm. Mm. We're going to end the day with a quick Q&A. A few people have asked some questions on Instagram, so I'm going to ask George. George will give his advice, his answer, and then I'll quickly give mine. We'll just, we'll quickly fire through five questions, okay? So. I wouldn't say that George is an introvert, but Mike definitely used to be an introvert. I'm an extrovert for sure. I would say George is somewhere in the middle. So how to socialize as an introvert in Ibiza? Go out on your own for breakfast to a cafe for lunch and just put yourself out there at the moment um, by just going out on your own, going exploring, go to a beach club, go and get a coffee, go and get a drink, go for a walk where there's a lot of people. Just try and surround yourself with maybe potentially busy crowds or not busy crowds, but... In places where there's lots of people and yeah. you don't necessarily feel that comfortable being on your own, you maybe feel like, oh, I'm being a bit strange here on my own, but I think that's when people actually, when you're alone, that's when people are most likely to approach you. And especially for George as well. Everyone knows that me and George lived here. George lived here for two years. And people, I think a lot of people, someone came up to him the other day in the cell, had a big heart to heart with him. People come up to you in the gym very often. I think if you place yourself in these places where, especially when you're alone, people will come up to you and it soon starts to give you a little bit of the confidence boost that people want to speak to you. I think in nightclubs, it's not a place to really mix with people and talk to people. You're not gonna meet anyone really there unless you're in the smoking area or something it's not really the best place to meet people so cafes gyms restaurants gym yeah they need to just push themselves and go out on their own yeah and just try and speak to but it's for people. me it's i like to speak to people i'll talk to anyone but for george who's a little bit more quiet than me now i see people all the time 
approaching George and coming up to him and talking to him. So I think just put yourself out there and don't be scared, don't be shy. Top three health food staples. So for me, my diet isn't that good. But for me, I like my greens from Ghost. I think I, I get a lot of nutrition from that. I like my electrolytes, which again is two supplements, but two supplements that I need in my life that are a complete staple because George knows himself, running out here in Ibiza, you need electrolytes, you need something to hold on to that water and keep your body hydrated. In terms of food, I like to have a balanced diet. I like to eat fish, I like to eat chicken, and I like to eat vegetables, and that's what makes me feel good. Yeah. What about you? What's your three? I know George is, I don't eat that much red meat, but George today is going for three steaks. Yeah, I think red meat is the ultimate anabolic protein source with all the, uh, the nutrients in there. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, red meat would be one. A nice, juicy ribeye steak. Yeah. Um, it's not really a, a good, healthy food, but bread. I think George has just been saying how much he loves bread. I couldn't. My, my preferred carb source would be bread because I like eating bread. I would rather eat more bread than rice and pasta and other carb sources. And then also probably fruit. I absolutely love eating fruit. I think it just digests well. I feel great off it. Plenty of vitamins and minerals in there. I don't eat enough fruit. I should eat more fruit because rather than eating chocolate or ice creams or beers, I should, ha I should eat more fruit. George is definitely right with that one. What's something that you now look back on and regret? I don't, I don't want to get deep in this video, so... No, but just, just think of an example. For me personally, I don't regret anything. Anything that I've done, and it's been a bad decision, or it's affected me in a negative way, it's been a learning experience. And I think it's very important that if you do do something bad or you make a mistake, you learn from it and you don't repeat that same mistake. So me personally, I don't regret anything that I've ever done. I just wish I had maybe done it differently. And I've learned from that mistake that regret and I know again if I approached the same situation I would do it differently. I like that. I think regret, I regret not enjoying the process of work and just I used to be so like angry and frustrated that I wasn't where I wanted to be in life. I wasn't earning a certain amount of money, a certain lifestyle. Um, and I feel like if I went back, I would just actually enjoy the fucking grind. Because now I enjoy the grind. But well, back then I was just an angry hothead, frustrated all the time, impatient. Yeah, you've definitely found your balance. I think George hiring a whole team and just you finding your place. Obviously you kind of had to cover uh, many roles in your business mm. at one point and now you've got people designated for different jobs and I feel like you can do your role to its maximum potential. Like you are who you are now in your team. Yeah. the leader and that's what you've always wanted to be so but I think he's doing a really good job now I'm very very proud of George he's killing it advice to my younger self would be to spend more time alone one thing that I'm very bad at is spend the t spending time alone I've always surrounded myself with other people I've never learned to be by myself even now I'm 30 still struggle to be by myself and I think I should have spent more time alone I think I should have tested myself when I was at a younger age I basically waited till I was 28 to kind of get out of my comfort zone and I wish I had done it earlier because I feel like I would have experienced a lot more earlier. I like that. I do actually like that because I've said to you fucking loads of times you need to just be alone bro. Um, for me, I, I don't know man, it's, um, it's probably the same question I just answered then really, essentially. Not be so hard on yourself. Yeah, Enjoy just... the process. Mm. One quote that I really love is people always say it's not about the view at the top of the mountain, it's about the climb. So I think one thing many people forget is once they get to the top and they have that clear picture, they realize, wow, the process was actually fun. That's why so many people, even though they're rich or become successful, they just never stop. They never, they never stop going. They just keep going because the process is so fun. I just enjoy the hustle. I enjoy the grind. I enjoy doing the work. I feel fulfilled when I know I'm moving forward and I'm putting the work in. When there's no momentum and I'm slacking, I don't feel good. I need growth. Me too. And that's one thing that I've learned being in Ibiza. Sometimes I feel quite stagnant and now I'm ready to kind of turn it up, film three videos in a week, and I'm already feeling happy. Right, last two. Is there anything you miss about the UK? Family's the only thing that I miss about the UK. Nothing else. Mm. 
Max expenses. <laughs> yeah, the luxury, luxury supermarkets. There's so many times when I go to the supermarket in Ibiza and I'm like, oh, I wish they had this or I wish they had that. Cindy, I can't wait for Cindy to come to the UK and try some like UK delicacies like fish and chips and like just things like that she's never tried. Mushy peas, gravy, chicken pie, Yorkshire puddings. Oh, filth. Yeah, filth. The best. You know what, actually, I think sometimes when you're in hot country, you it would be nice to wake up and just have that crisp fresh air fresh morning just just blue sky but really cold and just that fresh. smell of fresh <laughs> why bro i get but, that in madrid in madrid you know in mean? the winter it's nice like that i love that so cindy asked me and george what is our advice to someone who watches these videos who watches me and george on instagram who sees george motivating people, waking up at 6 a.m., doing these crazy workouts, eating healthy every day, training twice a day, and just enjoying life, but also working hard, and seeing us and being like, well, how can we compare? And I think my advice is, number one, don't compare yourself to anyone. And I think number two, which is one thing that I haven't been doing recently, is I would watch YouTube videos of people that I look up to, and I get inspired by them. I don't compare myself to them. I, if I see someone doing something, someone driving a Lamborghini, someone living in Hawaii, someone doing something that's kind of aspirational to me, I always tell myself, well, do you know what? If they can do that, I can do that. I think there is nothing stopping anyone from getting to a certain level if they put in the work, if they put in the time, if they put in the effort, and if they don't get put off by, for example, if you start a YouTube channel and you post your few, first few videos and they get 100 views, it's normal. It's, every single person that started a YouTube channel has to start like that. So I think don't compare yourself. Everyone's at different stages in their lives. And don't compare yourself to me and George and think, I can't be there. I can't be in that same place as them. I can't go to the gym with Louis and George on a Tuesday and have a day like this. Anyone can do it if you put in the work and if you believe in yourself that you can do it. Mm, that's self-belief. Yeah. It's everything, isn't it? It's one thing I'm just very fortunate to have and that I've probably took for granted because some people do struggle with that. But what's your advice? I think you need to be consistent and work your fucking ass off every single day for the next 10 years. And then you should be there. And if you get knocked down, you fall. If it doesn't work, keep going. Start something new. It's not meant to be fucking easy. And you know what? If it was easy, you wouldn't appreciate it. That's why I, I've appreci I appreciate it so much because it wasn't easy and I'm so glad that it took me so long to actually see some change and momentum. But it, I was meant to live that path. And to be honest, looking back, I would actually want it even more difficult. So I appreciated it even more. So be consistent, grind your fucking ass off for the next 10 years and then you should see some fucking results. But people are not willing to do that. They're not willing to work for six months. People have gone soft. You won't understand how many people just quit the first instance of some discomfort or failure. Exactly. If you, if you don't do that and you carry on and continue to work hard and don't quit, you've pretty much written off 99% of the fucking world instantly. You have to get out of your comfort zone. That's the number one thing. When me and George first met, George literally flew to Ibiza on his own. Me and George have been speaking for many years on Instagram, probably like 10 years. And he messaged me being like, bro, I'm gonna be fair. Let's go for a run. And I was like, okay, who are you with? And he was like, oh, I'm just on my own. And just George coming to Ibiza alone. He came for two weeks. He ended up staying for a month. They ended up just moving here. No, I came for two weeks. They ended up staying for four months. Yeah. <laughs> and there we go. It, it, George never knew what was gonna happen when he flew out here. I never knew what was gonna happen when I moved in with Joe and Jake. I never knew what was gonna happen when I started traveling the world with Mike and I never knew what was gonna happen. It was always gonna be a risk. Could have loved it, could have hated it. Many things could have went wrong, but we're here now. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna feel sorry for yourself for the rest of your life? Or are you actually gonna make shit happen and attack your goals and take action? Like, that's... You've gotta take action. Yeah. You can write everything down in your notes. You can write on a book. You can write, write with a piece of pen and paper and you can plan all of this stuff, but if you don't take action, it's never gonna happen. It's not actually as hard as people think as well. Like, they look at all these Insta-famous people, all these successful businessmen or whatever, even me, I'm like, it's I'm not special. Just put in the work. Put in the work, just like you're doing the workouts. I do the same in business, and you're consistent. That's all there is to it.
That's it, baby. Broski. Anyway, you, it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, bro. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Go check out George's channel. I'll put the link in the description. Follow George on Instagram. And yeah, George is putting out two videos a week from now on. He's gonna one, one, one a week, no matter what. And that's the consistency yeah. that he needs. But thank you, bro. So good to see you. Thank you too. I love you. Bye. Thanks, Nick, for filming.